Good morning, good morning, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Spirit of Fire Fellowship. I'm Pastor Mike Mayhem, the great city of Richmond, Virginia. And we just want to welcome everyone to our online worship experience. We don't believe it's by chance that you're here today, but we do believe that there's going to be something that's going to be shared that's going to be a blessing to your life. So on behalf of Pastor Raquel and myself, we just want to say welcome to everybody. All of our first timers, we want to welcome you today. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We want to give you all time to come on in. We want you to go ahead and share this on your social media posts. If you would do that for us, it'd be greatly appreciated. Invite somebody to church today. We're going to deal with a subject th today that I believe is going to transform and change you. And it's going to help break up some fallow ground. When I talk about that, what do I mean by that? It's going to help our hearts get ready to receive the fullness of what God has for us. Satan has been trying to destroy lives and bring turmoil and torment. But I believe that this message today is going to help alleviate some things. It's going to answer some questions. It's going to help all of us today. And so even as, a, as an organization, as a ministry, also individually. So it's like ugh, individually and collectively, I'm ready for this. I'm so ready for this. So invite someone, invite your mom and them, Pookie, Laquita, Shanae, all of them. Go ahead and tell Ray, Ray, Boo Boo, all of them. Come on and, and join in right now. We are going to minister on something today. Um, how to rebuild trust. This is going to be good. This is going to be important. And this is going to answer some questions for many of you, give you some tools to reestablish, reconnect. But also what God wants to do is to put things back into proper position and place to now manifest his goodness and his glory in the earth in you and through you and for you. I'm telling you, invite somebody, somebody that you know that has been, man, they've been struggling with this. They've been struggling with trust, trust in God, trust in people, trust in themselves, whatever it is. I want you to tell them to tune in today. Tune in today. I want to give you time to, to, to log on, to go ahead and text them. Go ahead and get your coffee, get your stuff together so we can go ahead and move forward. Listen, for all of our first timers, we want to acknowledge you. We love you guys. Appreciate you so much. Um, we just want to connect with you. Let us know where you're logging in from. Yes, we're um, virtual right now. We'll be coming back to in-person services. But in between time, in the meantime, in between time, we want to make sure that we connect with all of you, whether you're local or whether you're global. Let us know where you're logging in from, whether it's in the comments section. If you want to send us a message uh, via email through connect at spiritoffire.us or send us a DM or whatever direct message for those that don't know what that is. Um, through our social media platforms, we would love to connect with you. <clears throat> and so on behalf of my wife, Pastor Raquel, we just want to say welcome to everybody in Spirit of Fire Nation. We love you. We appreciate you guys so much. We're praying for you. Uh, we just had the opportunity of just coming off of a brief uh, mini vacation uh, during spring break. Um, it was a, it was a time much needed. God imparted some things into us. We're excited about it. Uh, we'll be sharing some things in the near future. but. Um, we want everybody to be in tune and to be engaged today. So all of my intercessors, I want you praying, pray for pastor today, pray for us, pray for our team. We want to give a big shout out to our media team that has been relentless, tireless. I'm telling you, they have been working behind the scenes to bring the word of God to you. And so I want to just acknowledge them today. Uh, for those that you don't see that's working, I'm telling you, we appreciate them so much. Our intercessors that have been praying. Anyone that's been praying for us, anyone that's been sowing into this work to allow us to do what we're called by God to do, we appreciate you. We thank God for you. And so we just want to give a shout out to everybody. So, hey, let's go ahead and have a word of prayer so I can jump into this today. Father, we just thank you for this, another opportunity to minister to these, your precious sheep. I thank you that revelation knowledge of your word will flow freely from heaven, uninterrupted and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force. None of me, all of you. Holy Spirit, speak to my vocal cords and think through my mind to bring wisdom, knowledge, and good understanding of the word of God. We do approach your holy written word reverently. We thank you right now for um, just wisdom, that you crown me with wisdom to articulate, to share the anointing of the teacher, even the prophetic anointing as needed. We covet the gifts of the spirit to be in operation and demonstration as you see fit. And so, Father, we give you praise in advance for every ear being anointed to hear, every heart being open, ready to receive the engrafted word of God, which is able to save our souls. 
We give you praise. We give you glory and we give you honor for it now in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, Father, we in advance thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your word that performs in our lives. Thank you that signs and wonders follow the preached word of God. We thank you right now for insight. We thank you, Father, that the eyes of our understanding are being enlightened right now, that we may know what we need to know and see what we need to see and hear what we need to hear. So we give you praise, glory, and in advance for it. We thank you for healing, emotional healing that takes place today, physical healings that take place today. And so we give you the praise. We give you the glory. Yeah, Father, we are vulnerable before you. We are naked before you. Work on us. Do surgery in us. Get out of us what you don't want in us. Put in us what you want in us. We thank you for it now. We receive it by faith. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Um, <sighs> there's an old adage uh, that goes, trust is the foundation of every relationship. Uh, but if that trust is broken, and unfortunately, trust can be broken, often that's due to whether it's infidelity, other times as a result of one person not doing something um, or holding up their part of an agreement, and so they betray the other person's sense of safety and confidence. Trust can also be broken when any kind of expectation in any relationship isn't met. This often becomes the case because these expectations, unfortunately, are not always communicated with the other person. And as a result, lines get crossed. Whatever the cause of this compromised sense of confidence in any relationship may be, I want you to know that hope is not lost. In other words, when trust is broken, it can be one of the hardest things to rebuild. However, it can be rebuilt and it can be restored. So for those that are now you're dealing with things, you're dealing with trust issues, trust in people, trust in God, trust in yourself, trust in whatever it is, whatever trust issue there is, it can be mended. It can be healed. It can be restored and you can be better in the name of Jesus. I want you to know that up front, that there is a hope, that there is a light at the end of the tunnel, that no matter how broken you feel based off of the trust that's been breached or broken, no matter who caused the breach, it can be restored. But watch this. You can rebuild trust in any relationship by showing that you have eliminated poor decision making practices. But doing so requires work from both parties or all parties involved. Now, this is going to be important. This is going to be very important because as I started going through this, as things start coming to me, as I was meditating on it, thinking about it. God says, I want to reestablish some things. And when you begin to reestablish and rebuild, there's going to have to be some playing field, some level ground that you work from that you're going to have to start from where you currently are. Now, there's so many relationships I'm going to be touching on today, whether it's a work relationship, a relationship with a member in this church or a relationship between a husband and a wife, a relationship between parents and children relationship, no matter what relationship it is, the best friend that you haven't spoken to in a while because of some misunderstanding or some disagreement, whether it's a thing where you feel as though that you can't move forward with someone. Why? Because trust has been breached. And if you don't deal with the trust issue, you can never move forward in any relationship because there's always going to be this underlying current of distrust that's going to cause you to question the motives and the actions of any person you involve with. And it's going to have to be dealt with. Now, one thing we got to realize is that we all have made bad choices and decisions in our lives. Now, now let, let me let me now I got my notes and I've studied the notes and I've written it down. And so I, I've deposited it in my heart. But let me let it come on out like God gave it to me or like I'm feeling it now. <laughs> We've all made poor choices and it's amazing how we want grace, but don't want to give grace. And we're going to have to give the same grace and mercy 
to restore any broken relationship that God has given us when he restored us back into right fellowship with him through Jesus. See, that's what it's coming back to. The same grace that he gave us is going to have to be the platform and the same grace that we start to rebuild in a relationship. The same grace. His mercies are new every morning. What is mercy? Mercy is God withholding something from us that we do deserve. Grace is him giving us something that we don't deserve. For some people, yes, they may not have earned your trust. They may have broken your trust. But God says there is an ability in you. There is a grace in you. There is a love in you that will help you through this restoration process and season. And you're going to have to submit to the supernatural agape love of God on the inside of you to get this thing done. Because God says, I got much stuff for you to do. And if you can open up your heart today long enough to receive the engrafted word of God, which is able to save your soul, that's going to save that relationship, that's ultimately going to cause glory to come unto me. Because what, watch this, what God has joined together don't let man, don't let Satan put us under. He ain't just talking about marriage relationships. He's talking about covenant relationships as well. There are people you were designed to do life with and Satan is a deceiver. He's the accuser of the brethren. And if anybody will try to come, if anybody would do anything to disrupt those covenant relationships, it will be Satan. So watch this. The Bible says to give him no place. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm saying this. I'm saying it kind of the end from the beginning, but we got to set this thing up because I'm, I'm going to show you some signals of where trust has been broken, of how you'll know that you got trust issues with people and with situations. And then I'm going to give you nine keys to overcoming these trust issues and to repair and to restore this thing. And in the name of Jesus, I declare and decree that now your oh man, that your hope is going to be renewed. Your faith is going to be restored. Your energy is going to be restored. And God is going to get the glory when this thing is all said and done in Jesus name. And every relationship that God has designed for you to have that needs to be mended, that needs to be healed, that needs to be restored in the name of Jesus. I speak the healing balm of God's love and grace to come upon that situation to restore what needs to be restored in Jesus name. Amen. Come on now. This surgery today. Holy Ghost, you are the counselor. He, he going to bring up some stuff. I know it. I already know it. I already know it. Now watch this. Let's keep going. <laughs> now, before we get ahead of, ahead of ourselves, it's going to be crucial that we first understand what trust actually means. Because how can something be broken if you don't even know what it is? <laughs> That's going to be important. And so what does it look like? What does trust feel like in the scope of a relationship? Now, I told you I'm going to be talking about many different types of relationships as I'm going through this. So if it seems at some points, it, it may seem like I'm bouncing from this one to that one. But I want you to find your place. Find what you need to hear. Receive what you need to receive today. All right, let's go. <laughs> Glory to God. Ooh, trust by definition. It means it's the firm belief in the reliability, truth, ability, or strength of someone or something. Let me say that again. Trust is the firm belief in the reliability, truth, ability, or strength of someone or something. It's also confidence. Faith in someone or something. It's freedom from suspicion or doubt. That didn't help. When I, even when I read that, freedom from being suspicious, being doubtful. So it's hard for you to trust somebody you're suspicious of all the time. You questioning their motives. Every time something is done, 
You're trying to figure out, are you trying to get something from me? I don't know if, if your motives are pure. God says, I want to squash that stuff because if you're not confident in somebody's motives, then no matter, even if they're doing the right things, it will never be received the right way because you're always suspicious and doubt. It means assurance. It means certainty. Now, now I'm going to just be straight up. I'm going to be straight up. Part of why I'm doing this, God is having me to teach this, I believe is to reestablish some things as an organization and reestablishing culture in this ministry. But also he says, in order to move forward, some stuff got to be dealt with and healed in people's lives, in their minds, in their hearts. And sometimes what can happen is there can be a mixing of the new with the old. And if the old is still holding on from stuff from the past, that even when the new come in, they can be contaminated because of distrust, suspicion, doubt, unbelief, or something that's entered in. And because Satan loves to lurk in the dark, he hates to be brought to the light. So that means honest conversation. Well, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but we're going to deal with this thing. Because doggone it, I'm telling you, God's glory is going to be revealed in this thing when it is all said and done. Now, watch this. In order to reestablish trust. In order to reestablish trust, it must start with change. No change, no trust. Now. I was going to, I want to read a scripture. You know, I, I got to give you scripture. Got to give you some scripture today. <laughs> but before I get into some signs of lack of trust in a relationship, I want to read the scripture. And most times this scripture I'm about to read has dealt more with a different topic of stewardship. But I want to show the backside of it where it's a trust issue here. Let's go to Luke 16, Luke 16, verse one. And I'm going to read verses one through 11, Luke 16, verses one through 11. And it says, and he said unto his disciples, there was a certain rich man which had a steward and the same was accused unto him that he had wasted his goods. Now, I want you to lock in on that word accused. The same was accused of him unto him that he had wasted his goods because Satan is the accuser of the brethren. I want you to understand some things as we're going through this. And he called him and said unto him, how is it that I hear this of thee? So now the, the rich man is now talking to the steward because it's been accused of the steward. He ain't doing what he's supposed to be doing. All right. And he called him and said unto him, how is it that I hear this of thee? Give an account of thy stewardship, for thou mayest be no longer steward. Oh, man, I want to hit something that I'm getting as I'm getting it because it's fresh off the press. Satan is the accuser of the brethren. And in any relationship, he will come with accusations to the minds of people to bring a distrust in the heart of the person of one or two individuals. So that now what God intended for two to walk together in their separation. And now the will of God can't be manifested. You can't fulfill God's will with the person you're supposed to be walking with. You don't trust. So if anybody is going to bring an accusation and watch this, because Satan even brings accusations to your mind, accusations does not mean it's the truth. It just means the thought has come about an individual. And so now look at what this 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 master does. This rich man does. He calls him and says, how is it? I hear this of thee. Give an account of thy stewardship. So now there's communication that's created to now say this is what I'm hearing. But come on, give an account accountability. Let's talk about this thing to see if what I'm hearing is true. So even if you feel as though you hearing something on the inside about an individual, you can't you got to make sure you don't get in what the Bible calls evil surmising. In other words, thinking bad about somebody. And just because you're thinking it, you take it as this God revealing it to me or discernment. And now you take it as whole truth because you failed to go into communicate with the person. The thought came about. Come on, come on, come on, come on, Holy Ghost. Let's let's let's. That sometimes a simple conversation will have squashed the whole thing. 
Let's keep going. Let's keep going. He says this. He says, give an account of thy stewardship, verse two, for thou mayest be no longer steward. <laughs> so he says, OK. He hears that this guy ain't handling business. So the rich man automatically comes and says, now stop and think about this. I I'm seeing some other things here. He's already decided he's going to let this guy go. Really, before he even talked to him, I never saw this before. I never saw this aspect until I was dealing with trust, because sometimes you can disconnect from people and cancel them. This is the cancel culture that we in. We cancel people so quick without giving them time to even share their heart. We're so quick to cut somebody off, so quick to now be judged guilty before proven. You know, you're supposed to be innocent until proven guilty. The culture that we're in now is you guilty until you proven innocent. So I've already seen or feel as though that you're guilty of a matter before I even talk to you about it. So even when I come to discuss it, I come with a slanted view, lens and ear because I won't even hear you from an innocent standpoint. I'll hear you from a guilty standpoint. And so when I hear you from a guilty standpoint, everything you say to me will be suspect. Man, you better come on, Holy Ghost. You better come on because this is going to help us to now say, if I'm going to come to you with grace and give you grace in this situation, I want to come with an open heart and dialogue to mend the relationship before the conversation even gets started. I don't want to get ahead. Of, I'm still getting ahead of myself with some stuff. But as I'm going through this, I didn't want to lose that thought because I'm seeing something here. And then he says this. Now, watch this. He says, then the steward said within himself. Now, watch this. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm looking at some of, the, some of the messages popping up. Now, watch this. Watch this. Why did this guy do this? Why did this rich man do this? He didn't trust this guy any longer to manage his stuff. And sometimes one of the things that people do in any organization, I remember hearing um, John Maxwell talk about this when he goes like he asked this guy, interviewed this guy who came in to a company. He went into this company and this guy fired everybody, all of the leadership in the company. And he so told him, he says, the first thing I do is fire the head. He says every time he's like, yep, every time he was like this, because if the head was doing what they were supposed to do, the organization wouldn't be in the position that it's in. And it was like, whoa, because one or two, because everything rises and falls on leadership. And so God shared something with me one time. There are one or two things that needs to happen when you want to take when you want change to take place in any environment. Either the leader needs to change. Or you need to change the leader. Now, that, that's that, that's a serious thing, because sometimes. I'm a person, I'm not quick to dismiss a person. But if for the health of the organization it needs to be done, then that's the strength of a leader to do that. And if you don't do it because you allowed it, it's like parents with children. The reason why your child act in a certain way because certain things you allowed. You know, I was, I was we was at a um, we was at a service not too long ago um, at a at a different at another church, and I saw this little kid um, that was acting up with I don't know if it was a grandparent or the parent. And so this child looked like could have been he could have been about three, four years old. I'm not sure. Um, but just the way now he wanted to praise God in the church, but the person was trying to hold him back. But the way he started falling out acting, you know, we see it all the time. We see how children act in public is a is a is usually a direct relation to as how they're allowed to act in private, because if they feel as though they can do that in public. Chances are nine times out of 10, it's been allowed in other environments. And so because it's allowed, then that behavior still goes on. So now what happens is you need to change your functionality as a person that's leading. So that now the behavior can change in the child. This is why he says I change the leader every time, because one of the things is this either that leader's mentality has to change. Or the leader has to change. You, you hear what I'm saying? Either you're removed. Or you have to change to rebuild trust in any relationship. I told you this in the beginning. Change has to take place. One way, shape, fashion or form. 
So now, because with trust is credibility, this steward didn't trust this guy. And I mean, this, the rich man didn't trust the steward. So he already decided to let him go. But look at what the steward begins to do. Now, watch this. Then the steward, verse three, said within himself, what shall I do? For my Lord taketh away me from the stewardship. I cannot dig to beg I am ashamed. He says, I'm resolved what to do. He says that when I am put out of the stewardship, they may receive me into their houses. So he called every one of his Lord's debtors unto him and said unto the first, how much owest thou unto my Lord? And he said, 100 measures of oil. And he said unto him, take thy bill and sit down quickly and write 50. Then he said to the other, how much owest thou? And he said, a hundred measures of wheat. And he said unto, um, unto him, take thy bill and write four score. And then the Lord commended the unjust steward because he had done wisely. For the children of this world are in their generation wiser than the children of light. And he says, I say unto you, make, you, make to yourselves friends of the mammon of unrighteousness. For when you fail, they may receive you into everlasting habitations. He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. And he that is unjust in the least is also is unjust also in much. If therefore you have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, who will commit to your trust the true riches? Who will commit to your trust or your oversight or the well-being of the true riches? Now, th this scripture, a lot of times we deal with this where the mammon is concerned. What I wanted to pull out of this was the trust issue here. So this guy wasn't trustworthy. So he made friends with the because he knew he was going to be fired. So he went on and made friends with the people that owed his master. At least he got something out of it. He says, OK, we'll cut the bill in half. Go ahead. And so he was doing this so that they could receive him when he was let go. So on his point, that was a wise decision for him. But the whole thing was. Why didn't he even do that from the jump to at least get something for his master where now that trust wouldn't have been broken so that he could have remained as a steward in that situation? Sometimes what happens is when trust is breached and you don't hold yourself accountable or you don't accept responsibility of your actions, the relationship can never be repaired. So one of the things you have to learn how to do is is to take ownership of your part to play in the dismantling or the breach of the trust. So you got to really understand this thing. So before I get into some of how to mend this thing is I always kind of get ahead of myself. I want to deal with the signs of lack of trust real quick. Now I'm going to come back and refer to some things here, but the signs of lack of trust in any relationship, watch this, a lack of trust will look and feel different for every person, whether it's a couple, whether it's in an organization, on the job, with leadership, whatever. But here's some things that signal that trust may have gone. Number one, I'm gonna give you four things. Number one, now this is more in a, a, a relationship, uh, more of a like a husband-wife relationship, uh, um, or it can be in any, really, it can be in any relationship. You anxiously cling to your partner and never want to let them out of your sight. You anxiously cling to your partner and you never want to let them out of your sight. That's one of the number one things you can see that you don't trust that person. You don't you don't know what they're doing when they're not around you. See, this is what we get control freaks from. And they're controlling. They have controlling behaviors. Well, why you need to go do this? Who you going with? How long you going to be? Why you got to go do that? All of a sudden, what that is, is birthed out of distrust. Because the real issue is you don't trust that person. So you got to keep dabs and tibs on that was it tabs on them at all times. I got to know where you are at all times. Now, I understand accountability where you let people know what you're doing so that trust can remain intact. I remember my wife and I got um, we got married. I think I just normally did it just because it was how I was raised to let people know where you are when you go out. So just in case something goes wrong. People know either how to get in touch with you for safety's sake, where you are, things of that nature. Not because they're so, and, and now if you got a person that's home and that's freaking out every time you go away for five, 10 minutes, it's like, man, what is wrong with you? All I did was went around the corner. All I did was go to the store. Where were you? You didn't tell me. Oh my God, now I'm freaking out. It's like, you need to calm down. 
Because now it's a thing of we're parents and children. A lot of times we as parents, and I know even for my children younger, um, two of them are young adults now, one is a teenager. There's a thing where sometimes it was, it was, yeah, it was a trust issue. It wasn't that I didn't trust my children to be in certain environments because number one, I understood the flesh nature. I know that sometimes when you put yourself in certain environments, that it is scripture that says, give no occasion to the flesh. In other words, don't even put yourself in a position where you can sin because now usually you will one way, shape, fashion or form. It's almost like don't even trust your flesh. You know what I'm saying? The Bible tells us, flee you for lust. Get out of there. You can't handle it. You think you can. But you can't. So watch this. If I was more, if I understood their decision making processes, the ones that. Well, you know, as your children get older and you know that they're smarter, wiser, make wise decisions because they've shown over a period of time that they make wise choices and decisions. It's easier for you to let them out of your sight because you trust the God in them. You trust their maturity level. But if you feel as though that you can not make wise choices or decisions on your own, the trust isn't going to be as high. So, yes, I need to know where you are a little bit more. Because I know you. I know what's in you. And I know some of what's in you came from me. And I know what's in me. And I don't trust me with that. So God knows, and I know how long I've been in this thing, so I know I don't trust you with it right now. No, this is, this is important. Sometimes that's good. But sometimes you're holding them back out of fear of what's in you coming upon them. This is what happened with Job. He was afraid that his children were sinning before God. And the thing he said that I feared the most has come upon me. Distrust, part of it sometimes is rooted in fear. What are you afraid of? Okay, let me let me be just straight. I gotta be transparent with this as I'm going through this. Um, my son and I. We were at a basketball uh, com uh, tournament a couple of years ago, and the team wanted to go to this little, uh, we were in another state, and the team wanted to go to this little club that was down the strip, you know, a little team club. And so the players were going, and so there was another player, his parent was like, where's your son going? Because they trusted us enough as parents to know, like, okay, if you let him go, then I know, okay, I'll let my son go if your son go. So I told my son, I was like, yeah, you can go ahead because he, he, he hadn't asked for much, hadn't done much real quiet, you know, kind of he got laid back personality, but I know a level of maturity that's in him and stuff. So I allowed him to go, you know, and, you know, I know it may have not have been the best song environment, but this was the interesting thing. Even when he went with his, um, the players, um, his teammates. He didn't stay long. He was like, really, the atmosphere was like it was kind of he was like kind of whack to him. It was like he really wasn't into it. Because of the fact that part of the reason why I let him go is because I did trust him. And I had to learn that. Now, watch this. My daughters got upset with me. And it was like, oh, my goodness. Dad, if that was us, you would have never let us go in there. You would have never let us go. It was like, oh, uh -uh, that ain't fair. That ain't fair. Some stuff, you know. Now, I'll just be straight up. Some things, guys are just different with their daughters than they are with their sons. We know that. Men out there, you feel me. You know what I'm talking about. I ain't saying it's right. <laughs> I'm just saying that's how it is a lot of times. And so what it was is because we look at our sons usually as predators. We look at our daughters as the prey. So we know how dudes think and how they do stuff. But then at the same time, I still have to trust my daughters just like I have to trust my son. I have beautiful daughters and I know dudes going to be hawking at them constantly. Some stuff, I don't even want to know certain situations that they, you know, some stuff, if I got to know, I got to know. But there are things where I had to learn how to just rest and trust that God, I raised them. My wife and I raised them the way that we felt as though we should have raised them. So we should be able to release them and have a sense of peace and calm to say, if you need me, I'm here. And so with my son, because of things that I learned with them, that I kind of loosened a little bit with him, yet at the same time, it's like, because at the same time, I still want him to know how to navigate in life 
and not be so sheltered that you now, you know, it's like you got to have street smarts, too. You got to know what's going on out there and be aware of not necessarily putting yourself in sinful positions, but at least be comfortable and know how to maneuver in certain atmospheres so that that trust is there. So the reason why I'm saying this is because if you're constantly clinging to someone and constantly trying to keep that uh, tabs on them as to where they are. Then you really don't trust them. There's a reason why you're doing that. It could be as a pastor. And listen, I've heard pastors talk about this amongst each other. They talk about, you know, you better check with your members. You know, during this pandemic, they go visit everybody's church. And so, you know, they still with you. And people, and sometimes you do have to check with people. Yo, you still with us? We still good? Or, okay, what, what, what you doing? I ain't see you log on. Or I ain't seeing you because I ain't talked to you. And they could be, see, this is how Satan works. I ain't seen you do this. You ain't like my picture. Or I saw you like this person post. You ain't like mine. I saw you do this. And look, listen, that foolishness will keep you made. It'll cause you not to sleep. And you so worried about it because you're trying to watch this because of that distrust and because you're not securing you and you're not securing the relationship. Because sometimes, you know, what can, what can squash all of that is conversation. We good? Is everything OK? Because here are some things that I noticed. How is it? How is it now? Sometimes just simple conversation, conversation with your children. Conversation with your spouse, conversation, whatever. And I know, I know for some of you, I don't want to stay on this too long. I'm saying this longer than I intended. Sometimes I know you have a valid reason to try to keep tabs. Now, because it could have been infidelity in the past. It could have been through poor decision making that you realize that I haven't seen a change of behavior to the point where it makes me comfortable but sometimes you got to know that when you're talking about reestablishing trust, there's going to have to give a point, come to a point where you forgive. Forgive is almost like you're doing it ahead of time. Before you show me your behavior has changed, I'm releasing you from the penalty of the last bad decision you made. Y'all better hear me with that one. That was, I hope you got that. That was better than you probably realized. So I'm forgiving you because God commands us to forgive. But watch this. He never commands us to trust people. The only person he really tells us to trust is him. And you're going to have to now rebuild this trust with individuals through systematic, you know, oh, before I get into that, I won't get into that just yet. I won't get into that just yet. I'm about to get ahead of myself. Let me go back to number two. Let me stay on track. Stay on track. Let me be disciplined. Stay on track. Second signal of lack of trust in a relationship. You don't allow yourself to be vulnerable or to get close to someone out of fear of getting hurt. You don't allow yourself to be vulnerable or get close to someone out of fear of getting hurt. That's where you can see that there's distrust because of what somebody else did to you. You can't move forward in anything else. In any other relationship. Or even if you try to reconnect with that person. You can't move forward because you still hurt from the pain of the last thing they did to you. Number three, you feel a big weight of uncertainty and insecurity. You're uncertain. You're insecure. You know, it's, it's like if, if, if a man is really insecure about some things, he won't let his wife talk to anybody, you know, any man by themselves. Or, you know, it could be a group you always suspect. What y'all talking about? And, you know, sometimes we as men, we can be, man, we can be territorial. I'll be straight up. It's like, it's like we had this context, especially we see other men coming to the picture. Who is this man making my wife laugh? Because I know I done caused her pain. And so now she's finding pleasure in conversation with somebody else. And if I know I haven't been doing my job as a husband or a man, then all of a sudden I'm threatened by any outside force. That's providing something that I'm not. So now I feel this insecurity, so I'm going to hover. And now she feels smothered. But you don't trust me? Not as that I don't trust you, I don't trust them. But you should trust me enough to know that if, even if they tried something, I'd reject it. I trust my wife. 
I trust him. I do. It's not that it's not that I'm doing it out of what's the word I want to use? Um oh what's the word? What's the word? Lord, I just had it. I just had it. You know, some people feel as though if you're not jealous, then you take them for granted. You, 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 you see what I'm saying? Sometimes people are like, well, you weren't upset that I was talking to her? No, I know you ain't gonna do nothing. But you mean you, you know, because you know, I think I still got it. So she could have. Huh, but I know you. When you look at it, when it's said out loud, it sounds stupid, but a lot of people do that. They get mad because you don't feel jealous to them like they feel towards you. So they look at that as love and concern for them. You, you see, I hope y'all get what I'm saying. Because, say, if my wife, if, if my wife don't get jealous because I'm talking to some other lady, then I might think, well, she don't love me or desire me or she don't think I'm fine anymore because now she ain't concerned that somebody else would want to even try to seduce me. It sounds stupid when you say it out loud, but so many times people do that. And so they will try to say, OK, well, you what? You don't love me anymore or you ain't trying to you ain't concerned because when we first used to be together, you'd be all up under me. Well, where in it? I'm confident and I'm comfortable in this relationship enough and confident and I trust you enough because you've proven to me over a period of time that you're trustworthy. And so now I'm cool. But watch this. It's because I would do things like, hey, I'm here. I'm getting ready to leave. I'm doing these things. So intentionally, I would do that. So that she would know where I am. And it just became a part of the fabric of our relationship. Where are you going to the store? What you mean? I'm a grown man. I ain't got to tell you where I'm going. Okay, she your wife. He your husband. It's okay for them to know where you're going. They should know where you're going. I'm just I'm going out. You know, sometimes it depends on if you're doing something for them or, you know. But if you're always secretive, it's like, come on. That just doesn't look good. It doesn't look good. <laughs> okay. Y'all know. I ain't saying nothing that y'all don't know. Number four. Let me hear it. Let me hear it. Let me hear it. You question the person's actions. Now, this is how you can tell that, that there, are, there are signs of lack of trust. You question the person's actions and feel like they're hiding something. You may even feel compelled to snoop through their text messages or DMs. Who's contacting you? Who's doing this? Now, if there's been a breach of trust, like infidelity in a relationship, you need to start doing some of these safeguards to make sure that you don't go back to the place that you came from. She should be able to look in it and see what's there. That's just that's what it is now. Because we're trying to rebuild. There should be a level of access that my wife has that nobody else has. There should be. There should be. Because now, if she's been hurt, if he's been hurt, because I don't always want to put it on the, the man, because it goes both ways. There are women who broken trust, there are men who broken trust. Now, I'm not just talking about in relationships. Let's talk about even business relationships. It can be in any type of relationship where there has been a breaking of the trust because of a person's actions. You want to see new actions or consistency in an area so that trust can be rebuilt. <laughs> so now that goes into how do we rebuild trust in these relationships? That number one, you got to have a willingness to work on a relationship. I've counseled many people over the years. It still takes two. The two people involved, whether it's with an organization, whether it's with an individual, whatever it is, is going to take both. Most times people put the responsibility on somebody else and don't take full responsibility. What is your part to play in it? What is it that maybe you did to cause the breach of trust? Take inventory. Take real good inventory and say, Holy Spirit, examine me and reveal me to me. 
Where did I go wrong? There's a lesson I got. Uh, I think it, was, it wasn't from Dr. Dollar. It was from another minister at a conference years ago. It talked about a mentor-mentee relationship. And in a mentor-mentee relationship, it talked about responsibilities of each. And a lot of times people put responsibility on one person, but don't take responsibility. It's almost like for a mentor, it's not always their job to seek me out. I'm the one trying to get something from them. Well, they ain't call me. They ain't check on me. They, they don't love me. Well, dude, you're the mentee. I got what I got. You trying to get it. You got to hear this. No, this is important because the less the Bible says is blessed or empowered by the better. I can't say, OK, well, Pastor Dollar don't want to spend time with me or Bishop Fuller don't want to spend time with me. Wait a minute. They overseeing hundreds of pastors. That means I have to be intentional. About establishing some things. I can't wait for them to think, well, they ain't think about me. They ain't check on me. They ain't call me. They ain't wonder how I was doing. You grown. It's time for you to grow up and come out of yourself. Because see, that's self-centeredness. Because then when you're always thinking about you, you won't do what's necessary to help that relationship. Now, this is important. We have to take ownership and be willing to work on the relationship. What can you do to work on the relationship? Just like it takes two to tango, you can't rebuild trust by yourself. This means that the person who violated the trust is willing to demonstrate how they want to engage in the relationship and repair the brokenness. In other words, then another thing is the person whose trust was violated is also willing to forgive and make themselves vulnerable once again for a renewed connection. So the first step towards reconstructing trust is to simply check in and make sure both parties are on board and that they're willing to put in the work to make it happen. Before you do anything else, you got to make sure that you are both willing to do what's necessary to restore the trust and to reconnect in the relationship. Whether it's with family, well, they ain't called me to come to this event. Well, y'all ain't talked in two years. Why would they call you? You ain't called them. You, you see what I'm saying? It's always putting it on somebody. Did you reach out? He who has friends must show himself friendly. Sometimes the reason you don't have friends is because you're not showing yourself friendly. You're not reaching out. How come they didn't say this? How come they didn't include me in this? How come this didn't? This? And, the, huh, huh, and you going through all of this. But the question is, what did you do? What are you willing to do to make it better? OK. <laughs> Number two, and I got to get ready to shut down. I realize I used all the time in the beginning. You got to openly apologize. <laughs> in addition to having willingness, rebuilding trust requires a heartfelt apology. While it can be easy for a person who broke their partner's trust to be defensive, this only aggravates the distress in the relationship. It's amazing how the person who it, we see it all the time. I know I've done it. I know many people out there listening have done it. You're the one who calls the distrust, but now you're the one that's defensive. You really had because see, really defensiveness is you trying to have self-preservation or trying to protect yourself from being hurt, even though you inflicted the hurt. And a lot of times hurt people hurt people. And the reason why you caused the hurt to begin with is because maybe there's something within you that still hasn't been dealt with. You better hear me when I'm telling you this will help because if you put down your walls to be vulnerable, because sometimes that vulnerability will show why you even did it in the first place. You better hear me. And a lot of times men of oh man are so susceptible to this. 
because we've been so trained to hold in feelings, emotions. Don't let anybody get in. Don't let anybody get involved. And now you have this cold, hard, callous thing where somebody, you, you know, whether it's your wife, whether it's a family member, whether it's somebody that's trying to figure out what's going on, but you don't even know how to identify what's going on. So it's hard for you to explain. So it's hard for you to even be helped if you don't know how to identify. And God wants you to identify this stuff so that you can be healed from it so that the trust can be renewed. The connection can be reclaimed and that you can now grow and flourish and be healthy and well balanced and live a good life. God wants you healed. And God is saying, God is saying, glory to God. I hear this. I am trying to get in the deep cracked crevices of your soul and uproot things that have held you captive for years that you didn't even realize you were in bondage to. That was a stronghold. That was an addiction. And he says this. And now to realize the root of that thing that now is springing out in your relationships because you were never healed as an individual. So you will never have healthy relationships. So even if you in this one, if you don't correct what's going on in you, you can reconnect with as many people as you want to. But you are still the same variable in every equation. And you carry your brokenness wherever you go. Oh, man. Whew, Jesus. Now, watch this. I may, I'm going to have to stop here. Oh, man, I got to pick up. I may have to pick this up on Thursday. <sighs> Openly apologizing. <sighs> and, I, and I mentioned, while it can be easy for a person who broke the partner's trust to be defensive and only aggravate the distress in the relationship, whether it's a letter, a meaningful conversation, multiple conversations, um, it could be any other way to express an apology. It's important that the person express remorse and a desire to repair the relationship. You know when stuff phony and when it is genuine. People want to see that you have truly see. This is where the word we get repentance. It's a change of attitude, a change of heart. People want to see that you genuinely change and that you're serious about changing. And this is the thing. And I, oh man, you have to give grace for the supernatural turnaround. Remember, we, we make the confession, supernatural turnarounds in the midst of great impossibilities. Supernatural turnaround doesn't always mean it's a quick fix. It just means also that God will empower you with the spirit of might on the inside to endure the process of change. You're going to have to give sometimes time to show because consistency requires time. You have to give people, I can show you better than I can tell you because you've been telling me this and every time you told me, you broke the promise. And so I have no confidence in your words any longer. So what I need from you is consistent behavioral patterns that only come from renewing your mind to a point where you can change your belief system, where you can start changing your actions and create new habits and new character to show the people I have truly changed. And it's going to take some work. It's going to take some work. It's going to take some work. That remember, we talked about how to write your own ticket with God. When the Lord appeared to Brother Hagin and told him these four things, say it, do it, receive it and tell it. Now you got to start speaking life over this thing. In the name of Jesus, I speak healing over every broken relationship that God has called for me to restore, I speak life over it. And I refuse to allow the enemy to come in to disrupt what God has joined together. You better hear me. If God, if Satan can't get to you, he'll get to the people around you that your heart is connected to. <sighs> One of the hardest things to overcome is a broken spirit. God, y'all better hear this. And people are looking for encouragement. 
Because remember the definition of trust, part of that definition is confidence. And some people have lost confidence in themselves. It's not that they lost confidence in another person. They didn't lose confidence in God. They lost confidence in them. That they don't trust themselves to do the right thing any longer. I have been through that, folks. I know what that feels like. It's almost to say, and sometimes when a person is in that state, what they do sometimes is they want to reject people around them because they don't want to keep causing pain to the ones that's closest to them. So they'll push people away because they're not comfortable in themselves to say, I don't even know if I'm going to stop doing this. So I'm going to sabotage the relationship ahead of time so you don't get too deep into this with me. Boy, you better come on, hold it. Ooh, Jesus. Oh, this is surgery. This is surgery. And I see why God said this. He says to rebate. He says, because this stuff that has been embedded and I'm ripping it out of you. And I'm getting this stuff out so you can be free to love again. Free to be, be who I created you to be. Free in me, Jesus says. Listen, I love you. I've already forgiven you. It's time for you to forgive you and let it go. You have changed and don't even realize it. But Satan is constantly harassing you in your thoughts to make you feel stagnant, to keep you in regret. And regret keeps you stuck in the past and you will never move forward. If you keep thinking about what you did wrong, thinking how you let people down, thinking how you didn't step up to the plate, thinking that I wish I could have done this. And God is saying, I have flipped the page, baby, and it is time for you to move forward. There is a new blank slate and it is time for you to rewrite. It's not to rewrite your history. It's time to write it out and declare with the tongue is a pen of a ready writer documenting on your heart. It's time to go over to God. It's time to release it. I declare in the name of Jesus that all things are working together for my good and for your good as well. And you will make wise choices. You will make wise decisions and there will be great healing in my life. Great healing in my family. And God, who I like how my wife said it. She got to preach it, but I'm going to go ahead and drop it like it's hot real quick. And this time around, this time around, I know what happened then. I know I didn't spend the time with my children that I should have then. I know I didn't provide what I should have for my spouse then. But this time around, God is the God of a second chance and a third chance. His mercies are new every morning. Every day I wake up is a new opportunity. And God is saying this. Don't you be how. Thank you, Lord. God, he been bringing this thing up to me more and more. There was, a, there was a prophecy spoken over my life. He says the enemy is going to har harass you with mistakes of the past, but you are going to allow the joy of the Lord to shine forth. And I didn't realize it at that time, but that word has resonated throughout my life when Satan has tried to come and hound me with bad choices, bad decisions, bad mistakes. I have to allow the joy of the Lord, which is my strength. Glory to God, because if Satan can zap your joy, he's taking your strength. And when he's taking your strength, you don't feel like fighting. But I declare that your fight back is coming right now. In the name of Jesus, I declare the might of God. I declare the strength of God. I declare the grace of God. I declare the mercy of God to be rekindled in you and reignited in you. And the spirit of fire comes upon you now in Jesus name. Who Jesus. Glory to God. Somebody shout fire. Type it in all caps. Fire. Give me the emojis. Fire. It's going to burn up bad choices. Fire in Jesus name. Reignited it again in Jesus name. Glory to God. And Satan will not have the last laugh. I declare it in Jesus name that your God going to get the last laugh. You going to get the last laugh. Everything's going to turn around together for your good. And when this thing is all said and done, you're going to enjoy this life. You're going to live the good life that God already prearranged and made ready for you to live. And I declare it now in Jesus name. Amen. 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 I'll deal with the rest of this later. Whoo. Whoo. Glory to Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. 
Satan is a weasel. He is a snake. He, boy, the thief has been found. And I declare a sevenfold recompense right now over your life. I declare a seven times greater anointing. I declare in Jesus name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If a thief be found, he has to replace it. He has to replace it. Yeah, you better hear me. He has to replace it. He has to replace it. Oh, glory to God. And this time around, whoo, Jesus. And this time around, Corey. And this time around, and this time around, le rumba sheke de 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 bre. And this time around, it'll be like you don't have a smell of smoke on you. What do you mean by that, Pastor? You won't look like what you've been through. Glory to God. God going to restore your family. He going to restore your name. He going to restore your credit. He going to restore opportunities. This is the restoring season. This is the season of acceleration. This is a season of great favor. This is a season of the catch up. This is a season where more than enough is coming your way that you walking in overflow, that you walking in victory in Jesus name. And this time around, glory to Jesus. And this <laughs> Glory. And this time around. Who Jesus. Ah, watch and see. And watch and see. Hey, hey. And you're going to say that to many. Watch and see. Yeah, I heard that before. But this time around. Watch and see. This time around. You watch and see this. I know I made bad choices and you're not going to hold me captive to those mistakes. I've already let it go. God already forgave me. I've already apologized. How many times I got to apologize? I'm going to show you through change behavior. That's the best thing I can do for you right now. Glory to God. And this time around. Yeah. Yeah. And this time around. Uh huh. And this time around. This time around. Glory to God. Who? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hey. Hallelujah. Ah, robo shekala masete robo. Groshete de 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 bre. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, hey, glory. Hande babe, she de go ba de. Hey, ko ba de, she de de go ba. Hande de bo ka de 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 bre. And this time around. I declare, according to Micah, that the breaker shows up. The breaker to break up foul ground is like the hammer of the anointing to smash things that have been strongholds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I declare it. It's going to take the anointing. It's going to take the anointing. To remove every burden and to destroy every yoke. It takes the anointing to restore. It takes the anointing to build. And I declare that you are wise master builders in your life. That God has given you strategy and blueprint. Internally, he's going to show you things you need to do from this point on. Glory to God. Destination, good life. Yeah. I also heard him say, yeah, bro, even last night as I was studying earlier this morning, I heard health. He said, I want my people healthy in every area. I want them healthy spiritually, healthy mentally. I want them healthy physically, financially, relationally, in their purpose. They need to be healthy in all of these areas. Yeah. Yeah. And a new thing. I know this is a God doing the same old, but for you, it's going to be the fresh and the new has come. The fresh and the new has come. It is in 2 Corinthians 5, 17 in the Amplified Version. The end of that version says the fresh and the new has come. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are made new. That's not just now for you at the beginning of salvation when you got born again. Yes. Yeah, the old passed away. The fresh and the new has come. But God is saying, I'm using that for you now. You've been saved 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, 10 years, 5 years, whatever it is. The fresh and the new has come. Whenever fresh revelation hits you, the fresh and the new has come. That's your morning. That's your morning. You've been crying long enough. You've been doubting long enough. 
But God is stimulating your faith to get the job done. It's going to require faith. And I'm telling you now, if you keep your faith intact, keep it engaged, you're going to see the supernatural turnaround of God. Yeah. Yeah, I declare turnaround. Yeah, can you bring that up for me? I speak turnaround. I speak turnaround. I speak turnaround. Glory to God. I speak turnaround. I speak turnaround. And this time around, glory to God. And this time around. And this time around. This time around. And this time around. And this time around. Whoo, Jesus. Wherever you are, lift up your hands and begin to worship. Begin to worship. Lord, I speak over your people. I speak peace. I speak healing. Every disappointment, let it go. Ha ha. I'm turning hearts of husbands to wives and wives to husbands, of parents to children and children to parents. And this time around, it'll be great joy. It'll be great joy. It'll be great joy in your midst. It'll be great joy. It'll be great joy. Glory to God. It'll be great joy. Great joy. Great joy. Great joy. Great joy. And I speak the thing over you that was spoken to me, that the enemy will try to harass you and hound you with mistakes of the past. But I declare that the joy of the Lord will shine forth and that you will allow the joy of the Lord to shine forth, that you will now say, no, Satan, that's in the past. That's in the past. That's no longer me. I don't remember that man or that woman. That's no longer me. Yeah. No go Glory to God. And this time around, glory, I can't get off of that. And this time around, and this time around, Shebroshet Tekana, new mercies, new mercies, new mercies every morning. This time around, Shebrama, Lebroshet Kana, and Kana. And I declare in families that there will be great mending in families, in families. Ah, Shokora Bashet Tedebre, wholeness in families. In families, in families in Jesus' name. Get it right. Go get it right. Go get it right. You've been holding too much unforgiveness. That's why your prayers have been hindered before me. Get it right. Get it right. Get it right. And as you hug, it'll be a supernatural hug. So yeah, yeah, for some of you, I was like, I can see it. You'll go to hug people and the anointing will come on you stronger. Come on, yeah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Lord, have your way in me. Every breath that I take, every move that I make. Have your way in us. Have your way. Horobo, as we celebrate this upcoming season of the resurrection of Christ, we thank you. The resurrecting of relationships, the resurrecting of dreams. Horobo, a supernatural upgrade. Glory to God. Oh, yeah, come. Oh, glory. Oh, oh, I'm about to upgrade you. <laughs> Ooh, glory. Ooh, Ooh, Jesus. Ooh, I see that, Lord. Ooh, glory. Ah. <laughs> the fresh and the new has come. I'm going to upgrade you. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, Reba Shekan. Woo. Handa de bre. Hambre mala bro Shekandi. 
who we do this right, Spirit of Fire, this time around. We're going to do this right. There ain't no if. We're doing this right. The full glory. The full glory. The healing power. The anointing. With this, it's going to come a who? A reverence of the fear of the Lord is about to hit us like never before. Hobrama, every private struggle I commanded be removed. Yeah, you don't have to accept the thorn in the flesh. Some of you have accepted shortcomings. You don't have to accept it. You've been created to overcome it, says the Lord. Yeah. Oh, glory to God. We pray from victory, not for victory. We are already seated together with Christ in heavenly places. Yeah, come up. Hey, hey, come up hither. Come up. Yeah, where righteous men and women dwell. Arise and shine for your light has come. And the glory of the Lord. Yeah, get back to the original that I told you. Get back to the original vision. Get back to those things. Speak those things again, says the Lord. And they are beginning to show for the enemy came to destroy what I planted in this city and in this earth. And he says no longer. He says you fight with everything that's within you and you declare and decree that the fresh and the new has come. And you speak over the land and I see it now. I call in land. I call in buildings. I call in people. I call in materials now. Come from the north. Come from the south. Come from the east. Come from the west. Earth, yield forth your increase now. In Jesus' name, glory to God. Some of you lay hands on your own head now. Receive, receive, receive. Who I wish I was right there with you. I lay hands on all of you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me get through this thing here. Whew. God doing something, y'all. Reignite love again. Love for people. Love for people. Not hurt by past situations. Love for people. Untainted. Love unfeigned. Yeah, that's what your word says. Love unfeigned is unhindered by any satanic or demonic force. Love. Restore faith in humanity and people, Father, once again, for those that have lost the hope. Restore that hope. Restore the joy of their salvation. The joy of their salvation. The joy of your salvation. Yeah. I'm going to protect you and watch over you. Yeah, I'm going to protect you and watch over you. And I'll expose people to you that you need to see. Their intentions and their motives. I'll watch over you. I'll watch over you. I'll watch over you. And you're going to learn how to trust again. How to love again. Some of you have been heartbroken. Man, I can sense it. Heartbroken. I speak healing to the broken hearts. To the broken hearted. To the broken hearted. Oh, Shabbat. De, 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 de. Honda. I wish my wife was able to come with me on screen, but right now. But baby, I ask you to forgive me for every time I broke your heart. I'm not someone doing this for show. I got to do what the Holy Ghost told me to say. He is that thing just coming up in me. Every broken hearted moment, every failed <sighs> promise. Uh, yep. And the Lord, and I'll fulfill every promise. I'll show you the world. I'll show you the world. God is glory to God. He's restored. He's restored to my children. I'm going to show you the goodness of God like never before. Who Jesus. Who Jesus. Who Jesus. Ah, they bush. Ah. 
Hala bash yok. Whew. Lord, I forgive every person who's spoken ill of me in any way, in my family, in any way, shape, fashion, or form. Forgive them, Lord, for they know not what they've done. Forgive them, Lord, and forgive me for holding on against any. I release them. And let the spirit of honor hit this ministry like never before. Show the base. Show the base. Show the base. Share the boke. Halemande. Hore bose. Handa bose. Share boshe. Hadosako. Whew. Ah, y'all forgive me. Sharaba shote kade. Shebroche kade. Sade boso. We'll trust again. Lord, forgive me. I lead by example. Forgive me for the distrust of those. I trust again. I trust again. I release again. Now let's build, Father. Let's build, Jesus. Holy Spirit, let's build. For your glory. For your glory. For your glory. Not my convenience or satisfaction, but for your glory. Sherobashe de Gumba. Whoo, Shegandi, he de Bova Dadi. Hode ba de bova da de boshe de de kide. Whoo. She baba de sete. Hande de de de. Hode ba je de se de de. Hande do se de de. Whoo. E de basho do go. Ha. She bra. Hade. Oh, mm, strong anointing, strong healing. Whoo, whoo, glory, glory to God, glory to God. Whoo, whoo, y'all, excuse me, he was doing something like me <laughs> in my heart. Ah. Woo. My goodness. Hallelujah. 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 At this time, and maybe somebody, you never made Jesus the Lord of your life. It's time to do it now. He said in his word, I take out of you a heart of stone, that hard heart, put in you a heart of flesh. He said, I'll put my spirit in you. I write my laws upon your heart, put my spirit in you that I'll cause you to walk in my ways. The Bible declares that if you confess with your mouth, the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God is raised from the dead, you should be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. If you believe, confess, the Bible says you'll be saved. Then you begin to learn how to walk as a believer in the principles of God and the kingdom of God. For by grace are you saved through faith. Faith in what? Faith in what Jesus has done. So I just want you to simply make this confession of your faith along with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you're the Christ, the son of the living God. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you were raised from the dead for me. I give my life to you now, Lord. Come inside me now. Live in me. Live through me. I make you Lord of my life. Say this now. Say, Holy Spirit, come inside me now. I receive you now. You're now on the inside of me. I now have the ability, yeah, to speak with other tongues. As you give me the utterance in the name of Jesus, glory to God. 
Now, the brethren, out of your belly, the Bible says, shall flow rivers of living water. Here come my lamanda. Come on, begin to open up your mouth and begin to speak. Those that can pray, come on. Just say a couple of words. Don't nothing in English, but yield, yield, yield. Yield your tongue. Yield yourself to him. Whatever your tongue sounds like. It may not sound like mine. Whatever it sounds like, shekando kora basitele mala mande bole basitele hora basata. We thank you, Lord. Thank you for your healing power. <clears throat> now watch this. I declare broken hearts healed, failed relationships be healed of the memory, the stain, the stench of it, the regret, the shame. I declare that Satan, uh, you got to you got to resist the shame when the thoughts of shame come to your mind. Reject it. Say in the name of Jesus, I cast that thought down. I will not be ashamed any longer. I will not live shameful any longer. The fresh and the new has come. And this time around, glory to God, it's going to be better. It's going to be greater. Now, there may be somebody out there you don't have a church home. And you've never made the, the conscious decision or choice. You've been following. You've been watching. And he's like, well, I'm not there locally. But listen, we have our E-Church family as well. That you can connect and become a member of Spirit of Fire Fellowship. Be connected. Call us your pastors. We would love to love on you and pastor you and teach you the word of God and train you in the things of God. If that's you, make the choice. Make the decision now. If you want to become, you're already a member of a church, but you want to be a partner with this ministry. You love what we're doing, what we're about. And you just say, you know what? I want to become a partner. Listen, there are, there are privileges in partnership. You can connect with the anointing, the same grace that's upon our lives, same anointing that we walk and function in, the same power of God that you see demonstrated. You can walk in it. So, yeah, that's what I want to do. I want to connect. Listen, just reach out to us at connect at spiritofire.us. Send us an email, connect at spiritofire.us. Or just send us a message, man. We, we, listen, I'll connect team will get with you. <laughs> Say, hey, you want to find out more information? We'll get, be more than happy to assist you. Hallelujah. At this time, we want to honor God. This is a perfect time to honor him with communion. I do apologize. We didn't do it last week, which was the first Sunday. But we're going to do it this week. So we want to give you an opportunity real quick. So go ahead and. To grab some elements if you need to run to your kitchen or whatever. <clears throat> some of you may be in a position you can't do it right now. Listen, as often as you do it, do it in remembrance of him. You can do it when you get home. You might be looking at it over your phone in your car or something. I don't know. But wherever you are right now, we can honor God in our give in our in the communion. And so we want to honor him with the communion table and with the elements. So even as we're doing that, um, to give people time if they need to go grab something. We're going to give you an opportunity to sow and to give as well. But before we do that, we want to honor God in this communion table. With communion also, you identify with the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. You recognize his body that was bruised for you. You recognize his blood that was shed for you. For without the shedding of blood, there is no remission or taking away of sin. And I'm telling you now, God wants to restore unto you life and that more abundantly. Praise God. Well, Jesus said it like this. He says, this body, this bread is my body, which was broken for you. As often as you do it, I want you to do it in remembrance of me. Let's eat. After the same manner, also, he took the cup. When he has supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. The new covenant. He says, as often as you drink it, I want you to do it in remembrance of me. Let's drink. The Bible declares that as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we do show the Lord's death till he come. So we're just acknowledging what Jesus has done for us. And that puts us in remembrance of all of the promises that he has for us, which are yes and amen. In other words, whatever he promised is, is a done deal. Now it requires our faith to lay hold of it, to possess it, to believe it. And then faith without works is dead. That means we need to walk out what we're believing and begin to do what God is instructing us to do through his word, by his spirit, 
we get those impressions. I don't want to take for granted that every person knows what I'm talking about when I say certain things. Sometimes I got to go back and make sure I refresh so we're all on the same page and that you understand. Um, you know, you feel the impression in your heart that you're supposed to do a particular thing. That can be the spirit of God speaking to you to go to do this. I want you to start this business. I want you to, to launch this ministry. And that's the vehicle by which he's going to bring that increase because in that pathway is the good life for you. And so he's leading, guiding and directing you every step of the way. And God's favor is going to be wherever he guides, he provides. As he starts leading you, dropping ideas in your mind, things that he wants you to do. Listen, we believe for the billion flow. It's time to start thinking bigger, greater. Some of you are like, oh, I'm going for trillion. Hey, <clears throat> the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. He wants you to, to go, to stretch. And I'm going to deal with that because he also gave me something else to deal with. And I wrote it down. And I was like, whoo, this is going to be good. I heard a word. And I was like, man, <laughs> this, this, this is going to be something. I think I'm going to start it next week. But it, it, this is going to be good. I was, I was start getting stirred up as he was dealing even with this. That's why I want to deal some more with it this week and dealing with the trust issues that you're going to have to trust God. And you're going to have to be able to trust people. To get to where you, you're called to be, because nobody does it by themselves. So God blesses at the speed of relationships. And so if Satan can do anything to slow you down. He'll try to disrupt relationships, close relationships. So that you won't fulfill or it'll cause you to be stagnant and not move forward. But I declare nothing will stop you from moving forward in Jesus name. And everything you need will be provided. Glory to God. Well, this time we want to honor God in our giving. There's some information coming up on your screen. Giving is a part of worship. Man. I was, I was rushing even before I came on camera. It's like I got to get seed in the ground. We sow as a ministry. Um, even into our covering church. And that's one thing. It's like, uh, I got, I got to sow. <clears throat> I want that same grace on us. That's on them. My man and woman of God. I listen, I, I want to, I want us to charge ourselves. I want to charge us to now begin to step up in our faith, even where our giving is concerned. Get past the, 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 the choking points because God wants to accelerate your increase. And so we declare and decree that all is well with you in Jesus name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is a good God. So at this time, you see the QR code on your screen. You see the different ways by which you can sow. I'm just taking this time to sow some more myself right now. <laughs> Whether it's through cash app, texting, you go on on the QR code, it'll take you to a secure page whereby you can sow and you can give. Hallelujah. Well, we declare and decree and we speak over your seed. We speak over your tithes and offerings and gifts of love. We, we water this seed with the words of our mouth. We declare and decree in the name of Jesus. As you give, it is given back to you again. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. That God is causing men to give unto your bosom. I declare great favor over everything that you do. Open doors now that no man can close. I'm telling you, you're in an open door. You're under an open heaven. Open door season for you. It'll be so easy. I'm telling you. We are starting to experience it personally with things. Open door, ease, the anointing of ease. I declare it in Jesus name. <laughs> There's some things you've been fighting for. You've been fighting and fighting and fighting, but now it's time to rest and declare it's already done. <laughs> when you look at Jesus' life, even when he prayed for people, when he declared things, it, it, it wasn't no big monologue. He'll say simple words. No fruit grow on you from here for. Rise up, take up your bed and walk. Your sins be forgiven thee. Lazarus, come forth. <laughs> it was full of power. And he was confident in who he is. And he knew when he spoke, it, whatever he spoke to had to obey. That's good. 
So I declare it. Restoration in Jesus name. Well, God bless you guys. Love you so much at this time. Listen, I'm out of time, certainly not out of message, but we here at Spirit of Fire Fellowship where our motto is <laughs> changing the culture, igniting a passion and living a dream. I want you to rest today. Enjoy life today. Reconnect with people today. Call up a family member. Do something good. Have some fun. Rest, relax. Do what you got to do. Enjoy this day. Don't worry about tomorrow. They got enough concerns of their own today. Enjoy now. Enjoy the moment. Stop racking through what you got to get done. You got to take sometimes just stop. You're racking yourself. You're stressing yourself out for nothing. Relax. I understand hard work and having a good work ethic. But you got to learn how to rest. Some of y'all workaholics rest. Rest your mind as well as your body. Like, I don't know how to do that. Sometimes it takes a moment for you to train how to quiet your mind down. To get it to a place. Then you begin to hear clearer from God. Rest. The strength upon you in Jesus name. Amen. And amen. God bless you all. Love you guys. See you next time. Peace. Thank you.